What have we got here? A smiley face? Well, no, that's not the intention anyway. Okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to draw on the lips. Okay? How to draw on the lips. All you need is just two simple tacks. Um, obviously, I'm using a whiteboard, so I'm using a vertical surface because it's easier for the presentation, but when you're doing it, use a flat horizontal surface. Okay? Um, like two pins stuck into a cardboard or something like that. All you need is just two things though. Those effectively act as our focus points of the ellipse. They need a piece of string, and I've tied it together, you see. I'm sure you'll agree this piece of string. Here, let me just show you. There's no tricks to this, okay? Um, it's not extensible, okay? I'm trying to extend it. It's not extensible, and it's closed as well, okay? What I'm saying is the whole string length is actually constant. Let's just put it back on again like that, all right? Now, first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how it works using my finger. All right? And then I'll do it using a pen, because on this surface here it's actually a bit hard using my pen. All right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to hold the piece of string so that all of the, um, well they're now edges I'm going to call them, all of those bits of string are taut, so they look like straight lines. It's forming some sort of triangle, isn't it? Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to trace a path around the ellipse, sorry, around the um, focus points, such that the string is always taut. You can see my finger is actually tracing a path of an ellipse. There we go, like that. See how that works? Do you want to go around one more time? Yeah, let's just go around a little bit more. Now, if I had the technical know-how, and I don't, what I'll do is, well, I don't even have the non-technological know-how, do I? If I had the know-how, I'll trace a path around my finger as it's going along the video, but I can't do that. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to show you how it works using a pen. Um, it took me several goes at this, if I'm honest. Okay, it's probably my seventh attempt that I'm about to show you. Okay, but the reason is these bits just kept on moving. Okay, so if I just put a little bit too much tension, see, as yeah, that slip. As soon as it starts slipping, you don't get a closed loop. Um, there's a blooper section at the end of this showing you my failed attempts. Okay, I'll show you just how difficult it actually is. But coming up is the bit where I actually got it right. So, here it comes. So, taking my pen, I'm going to put it there. Now the string is taut. I'm going to start to move. I'm going to be careful I do this. If I use too much force, one of the focus points moves. I won't get a closed loop. Actually, a lot harder than it looks. There we go. I'm fairly pleased with that. Okay, so yeah, if you're doing lips, just do one at home. Okay, but why is this actually happening? Why is this happening? Well, the important bit really is this piece of string. You see, okay. If I just place it anywhere like there, as such. The idea is that because these two lengths here are always constant, you get this liberal path, okay? I'm going to show you the mathematical proof of that right now, okay? I'm going to show you why the sum of these two bits is always constant with an ellipse, okay? Well, I'm hoping you enjoyed that for the time being. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I'm just going to talk to you now about the mathematics of it all, okay, and how it all works. I've just rephrased it in terms of what an A-level mathematics question looks like, and I've put it behind me. I'll read it out to you. So an ellipse of the equation x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. It's got two focus points, s, a is 0, and s dash, negative a is 0. You've got a point p that lies anywhere in the ellipse, and we want to show that ps plus ps dash is equal to 2a. Okay? And the whole point about it being equal to 2a means that it's always constant, it's fixed. The 2 ps plus ps dash is always fixed. In terms of a diagram, what it looks like, here we are. So here's the ellipse. In terms of what I did earlier, I had these two magnets on the board, and I just put them there in terms of what the focus points look like. And then I had the string, and it went all the way around, didn't it, of course, forming this lovely looking curve. That's the point P that lies anywhere on the ellipse. So we call P, it's got general coordinates, X, Y, and of course the coordinates S and S dash are already known, and of course the directrices, x equals a over e, and x equals negative a over e. So how are we going to do this? Well, we need to use the eccentricity of the ellipse. And if you remember, the result about the eccentricity is that e is equal to ps over pm. Okay? 
Now, we can rearrange that simple equation, so it reads like this, of course, PS equals EPM, but don't forget, the eccentricity can also be used for this dielectric here and this focus point there. Okay, so not only have you got PS equals EPM, but you've also got PS dash is equal to PM dash as well. All we need now are expressions for PS and PM, and of course we can then get expressions for PS dash and PM dash as well. In terms of PM, that's quite straightforward. That's this bit here, of course. So you've got the X coordinate of M is over E. Let's make that fraction a little bit bigger so you can see it. There we go. And you've got that x-coordinate there, so that bit there is the difference between this and this, so a over e minus x, okay? In terms of ps, so that's from here to here, um, that's going to be e multiplied by pm, okay? So ps is equal to e times that, so a minus ex. And then you've got similar result for pm dash, so pm dash is going to be I'm not sure why I didn't label that, but that's m dash, okay, sorry for that. That's p m dash there, so you can see that's going to be all of that, which is positive a over e, because it's a length, plus the x coordinate, hence x plus a over e, let's make that fraction a little bit bigger. And then p s dash, so it's effectively this bit there, is going to be e multiplied by that, so e times that, e x plus a. All we need to do now, of course, is add them together, p s plus p s dash. Before I do that, you can see what's going to happen, can't you? Yeah, you can see that the EX and negative EX, they're going to cancel. Okay, so you've got A plus A is equal to 2A. There's not really much more to it than that, it's really quite simple, isn't it? Okay, let me just explain to you again that the fact that this plus this is equal to 2A, in other words, these two lengths is equal to 2A, means that it's always constant, it's always fixed. If I just, I don't have it anymore, if I showed you the piece of string, that was always fixed, wasn't it? Okay, and that's why you get this nice elliptical path. I'm hoping you found that useful. Okay, I'll see you again. This took several goes. Okay, there were several, shall we say, um, errors in my recording. Okay, and I had to re-film some of them bits. Okay. I'm just going to show you now a blooper reel. <laughs> well, it's, it's more my frustrations at things going, but I just want to illustrate to you that sometimes things don't go according to plan. Most of my videos, it's one take. Ah, he says, yes, it's one take. Um, but this one wasn't, okay? Probably took 20. Okay, anyway, here's a blooper reel for those who are interested. Doing the spiral now. Well, let's cut that because that was not what I wanted. Not only is that not an ellipse, it's a bloody circle. I did not want a circle. Oh no, I've not quite done it. Moved again, unbelievable. So I'll know how smooth I've been if I get a closed loop. Oh, I'm getting closer. Oh, damn it! is always constant with an ellipse, okay? But I'm hoping you enjoyed that for the time being. Yes, got it right! Ah, come on. Like those two pieces of string there, whoa, moved it. And yeah, this just going all the way. That's just absolute rubbish, I'm not gonna do that. So take any point P that lies in the lap, Oh, the elapsed, what the hell is an elapsed? Oh. Like, so I put it behind me, but I'll read it out to you. So you've got an ellipse of the equation, x squared over a squared, plus y squared over b squared equals one, and you've got two focus points, p, no, it's s, it's s, s. If p is any point on the ellipse, then s, like, 
So I put it up behind me, I'll read it out to you as well. So you've got the ellipse with the equation x squared plus... No. Right, well I hope you enjoyed that. Because I did. Oh, I can't remember what to say. Just points. Okay, call them S and S dash. The first one, S being A0. No, A0. God. I'm just going to talk to you now about the mathematics of what we just saw. I've just worded it though in terms of an, an equation. No, it's a question. What we just saw. I've just worded it in terms of a question in. No, 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 no! If I don't do this, my time the bell goes, I'm going to be so annoyed. What is, we've got PS and we've got PS dash. Of course, eccentricity also means that PS dash okay, um, over PM is also equal to E because it doesn't matter which of these two that you use. All right? So, rearranging, we've got PS is equal to E times PM and we've got PS dash is equal to PM dash. I said M last time, didn't I? I didn't say M dash. Oh, let's do it again. So this is what the graph looks like, and of course we've got blah, 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 blah. Right. Okay, so this is what the graph it looks like, and then we've got yeah, the eccentricity property. Device, no. So we've got the eccentricity. Eccentricity. Right, so we use eccentricity. Of course, we can use either this focus point there, S, or we can use, and there goes the bell. There goes the bell.